LED taillights, custom covers. Let's go see how I did it. At the very least, you should remove your lights and check the wiring and the crimp ends here, the butt connectors, because as far as I'm concerned, these are just temporary. And you can see they've replaced this light bracket here with another one, and they've just crimped half an end on it, right? The wiring is not very spectacular here. Look at this side over here. See the bare wire there? That's how you chase problems around the bus because this could wiggle, touch the frame, intermittent problem, maybe blow a fuse, maybe the light won't work, and you'll be chasing it forever. So check and repair all the connections. Soldering, shrink wrapping is the only way to do it. That's permanent. Here's the wiring coming to the back of the bus, follows the left channel here right above the windows. Goes into this corner here, across here, and it went down here to the tail lights and the rest of the lights in here. But I have ran the tail light wiring over to here to a tail light converter. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there it is, tail light converter. It converts the three wires that come into here into this daylight converter to two wires going out. So that means the turn and the signal are on one light instead of two lights now. So I'll show you uh, inside the shop what I've done here. But for my purposes, I wanted to run the tail light so that all four of them are marker lights and all four of them are brake lights until you turn a signal light on. And then one side is brake lights and this side you're signaling on, both of these are signals. The stock ones are um, brake lights, that one and that one. And then the inner ones were yellow and they were the signal lights. So this way I think there's more lights on and they're gonna be brighter. And it's a little probably less to that school bus look. So yeah, that's the way we're gonna go. I'll show you how I did the wiring to the lights inside. So these are the lights I've used. They're LED. Uh, they come pre-wired like this with this three pin Deutsch connector on here. And you can see, I don't know if you can see, but I can see the black one here is marked tail light right there. This is stop and turn light right here. So that's, that's where the three wire to two wire conversion comes in, uses this one wire. And the white one is the ground wire. So I've changed the wiring in the bus to these Deutsch connectors. And to get this off, you just pop that out. And to put them together, you just peel off a little bit of the outer insulation, about that much. Put one of these sockets on here because this is a male end here. You use the sockets. Put it on just like that. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little hole right there. If you can see wire in there, then the wire is pushed far enough inside that you can crimp it. And these are the little crimpers for the Deutsch connectors. Just push it in there, pull it down, squeeze it all the way, and it's a good sturdy connection. And to put these together, all you do is find the appropriate pin, right? It will coordinate these pins to whatever matches here. So the white one is this corner. So you just push that in. Until you hear it click right there it's locked too easy here's one I've done already um, the black one this corner 
So we'll push that guy in there. And again, you push it in until it clicks there, clicked. So we're done. And then after you get all three wires in, you just put the cover on, snaps on like that. Everything's protected, sealed, zero maintenance. Get the cover off again like that and get these out. There is a little tab inside here. And all you do is click it like that. And then this will pull out. Put that in there. Click it. And this comes out. Put them back in. Listen for the little click. That means they're locked in. So yeah, these have little silicone seals on the back side and on the front side. And these, when you put them together, they also lock. Hear the click, that means they're locked. And like I said, zero maintenance. So I've changed the back wire wiring on the bus to these connectors to match these fancy lights. Yeah, these look way better, way better than the other ones. Well, I'm going to show you how I put these uh, LED lights on here. And one of the reasons we did the LED lights was obviously because they're brighter. And I found a good deal on red ones, enough red ones to do the back of the bus. We're also not just going to use um, screws like these sheet metal screws because when you screw them in here, there's a lot of wires in here, as you can see. I've reconfigured the wiring to fit uh, the way I want the rear taillights to function. But anyways, back to this threaded screw, you can see as you screw it in here, it's got a sharp edge. It can poke one of these wires or over long term, the wire will rub on here and short out, right? So we're gonna eliminate that for sure. And we're gonna use these threaded inserts. And this is the tool I'm using. I'm using quarter inch uh, national course inserts. This is what the insert looks like. This is what the tool looks like. So you just thread this on here and hold one end with a wrench right there. And this tool comes with this kit. And as you tighten this, it squeezes this part here that's knurled, squeezes this together and pinches it pinches the bus frame between here or the material you're using. So yeah, I've done two here. This, these are kind of flush there. Drill out these holes to whatever it says for your size here. Mine is uh, 25 60 fourths. Be careful when you're drilling into there because like I said, there are wires behind here. And let's just do one. Show you how this goes. Move that out of the way as much as we can. Just go fast and be firm. Hold this drill uh, from going in there too far. Go slow, I mean. There, that one was good. So we'll change drill bits. That drill bit I just used to make a pilot hole a little bigger than what was it originally there. Now we're going to put the 2564 on there. We're going to buff this off a little bit. Oh, bump you guys. Bump, bump, bump. Buff this off a little bit. So we just get this insert here. I know there's a big gaping hole here, but I like to put a little bit of some kind of sealant on here. Might just help it grab later on. For sure it's gonna seal. With a Sika Flex around there. Put that in there. Put the 9 16 wrench on here. Hold this really tight. And as you turn with this uh, ratchet here, push, push in on this so that it stays straight. 
it'll pretty much center itself, but as it squeezes in, it'll want to center itself. Just keep going. It gets pretty snug and you want to have it pretty snug so that it pinches the steel there. And as you take this off, you are turning this this way, right? So you're holding down with the wrench. As you take this off, you want to move the wrench up, up like that. So when you back this off, you don't just turn the insert and make it loose already. Take the tool off. And we'll wipe off that little bit of extra Sika Flex there. There, just like that. That's pretty easy. We'll do one more here. Like I said, a little bit of seat flex on here. there put the wrench on hold it somewhere comfortable hold this straight push in crank snug her up you want it to pinch hard, lift up on this wrench, back it off. And there it is. Wipe off the uh, excess Sika Flex here. screws will screw in there and they're considerably more secure than a sheet metal screw for sure screw them in there they work just fine yeah we'll finish this side I guess I didn't show you the rest of it so we've got 2564s now and we'll drill through the rest of these other four Something like that. Sometimes these don't just go in there because of the drill bit or how it went through. You notice the drill bit is has two sides, so it wants to wobble and makes makes flat edges sometimes. So just clean it up with the file. Depending on what your Drilling into, they may just fit right away. Don't go too much, a little bit at a time. A little bit of Sika Flex. As you can tell, I like this stuff. Works good for a lot. We will just do all of these. Put the light on and I'll show you how it works. What I have to do to get the lights to fit. Because as you know, the nothing on the bus is symmetrical, so these holes are pretty random. Whereas the holes on the new LED lights, they have a specific pattern that they fit. Two more to go. Yeah, 
that. And these sit pretty flush here. They don't actually add just a wee bit of uh, depth here. Yeah, as you can see, the this is the foam seal for the new LED lights, and it has a very specific pattern. And on the bus, where they've drilled the holes for their lights, it's pretty random and it doesn't fit exactly. So I've had to drill these holes. I drilled all these four holes out, just a wee little bit. Make sure you support the light um, somewhere that's sturdy while you're doing this, because if you're drilling and this happens to go grab or something and gets sideways, it could crack the light. So make sure you're holding on to everything tight. Just go slow. Goes through pretty easy. And if you go fast, chances are you're just going to melt the plastic anyways. You see that? Right there. Yep. Hold everything solid. Just go slow. There we go. Holes are drilled. That's pretty easy. I have one of the lights over here and there they are there is a top and a bottom it says top there and top there so I would imagine that either top would be okay but we're gonna put the wiring down to the bottom connect it with this three pin Deutsch connector that I have here there it is you got to hear a click that means it's latched <clears throat> tuck the wires in We'll make sure all the holes line up first before we continue with the second part of this. I'll show you. So there's one. Two, and that guy doesn't. These holes are a little further apart then. So we'll have to drill these holes out in the light a little bit bigger. Alrighty, let's try this again. Plug her in. Click. I'll tidy these wires up a little better later. Put some loom on them and some tape so that they're protected. But for now, I'm just making sure that everything fits. Yes, that's the top. Right there, and these are quarter inch national course um, button head screws because they fit in this slot here. I think if you tried to use just bolts, you wouldn't get a socket on there. That's that guy. guy and hopefully this guy fits there we go yes all three fit let's try the other one you can see this gasket here this foam seal they have a slot in here you can also see by the indentation here that I had this on the other way before. So let's do that. Just take this out, swap her around, put that on, plug her in. Tuck this in here. See if this guy fits. Should.
I think later on I'll get a uh, quarter inch stainless steel button head screws. But for now, this is just to fit them on here, make sure everything does fit. There, and all four of those are in there. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tighten up the bottom one a little bit. Keep it snug. Take out these three top ones here. I guess the one top one, two side ones. And we're gonna put on this little custom cover here. Awesome, hey! Just one more little detail, hey! It's all in the details for sure, absolutely. Put this guy on. So we can see what the whole thing looks like. Hey, that looks awesome. Just snug her up a little bit so you can see what it looks like. Hey, look at that. That is awesome. Yep. A little rain guard over the top. Well, you can see the other side's done already. Let's go see how I did this. How I made these, trimmed them off. But while we're here, the reason they're cut off is because if they were this long, like the original ones, You would probably a uh, little sharp edge to get caught on. <clears throat> so yeah, we just trimmed them off. So they're just sticking out a little bit. See that? Yeah. Let's go over here and see how I did this. Okay, this is the stock light cover, I guess, whatever you want to call it. From the original school bus. You can see how much I cut off this much, right? What I did to measure these, or to, to build the other ones, I just got something that was about the right height that I needed, and we're just gonna hold the paint pen steady here. And we're gonna roll this around. Even if it doesn't touch everywhere, you're still going to get a nice line there somewhere to start, right? We're going to clean it up later. So that's kind of that. And for the corners, I just put this right there. This is just an old zip disc. It has a little bit of life left. And then trim this off with a zip disc, right? Clean it up, buff it off, and then you have the little ends that I used. And that's pretty much that. So let's go back over here and we'll see one more time what they look like. Yeah, hey, eh? it's fancy. And like I said, you don't want the whole stock thing hanging out here. This way protects the lights. It's gonna seal them from the elements from the top where the rain's gonna get in. And yeah. Just one more little detail. Like They look pretty fancy. So I've also added these uh, lights down here. Those are signal and marker lights as well. So they'll signal when those signal. And I made these little protectors for there too. 
can see it has a grommet through the back there where the wires go through. It'll just bolt down underneath there. I have this one on already. Yeah, a little protector for the light. Helps it get sealed. I'll seal the top edge there probably too. And plus maybe a little bit of protection from getting bumped here. Yeah. Paint those black to match those ones. I should do it for this one. Bye.